Welcome to the Authentic Faith Podcast. I'm your host, Andrea John. We are all on a journey, and our journeys consist of stories. There are real people like you and me that have incredible stories that infuse everyone with hope, and they deserve to be shared. Today's tour guide is Shaun Odeinde, an evangelist from Jacksonville, Florida. Shaun has many stories, and his life is a living testimony of the goodness of God. We'd like to invite you into our conversation about the supernatural and God's abundance in our lives. So come along the journey with Shaun Odeinde. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of My Story. Today, I have the amazing privilege of having Shaun Odeinde here. Um, He is a wonderful friend of mine that I met through uh, one of uh, a ministry called Jesus House that I happen to co-lead with my husband, and he's become a dear friend. He's extremely passionate about God. He really goes after after it. He has this peaceful aspect to him. Um, and it's just kind of, I don't know, he's just one of those people that that you want to be around. Um, so I would love to introduce him to you, but I think that he would do a much better job. So Shun, welcome. And can you introduce yourself to everyone watching? Yeah, thanks uh, for having me. Uh, my name is Shun Adeinde. Um, originally, I'm from Nigeria, which is what in West Africa, and um, I've been a believer since I was around, I would say, 21, maybe 20, 21, or, or 19, around, around, around that time. Today, we're going to be like the other uh, episodes. We're going to be talking about stories of hope and faith, and love, Um, and today is going to be no different. Um, One difference is, much like Justin's, I have no idea what Joan is going to talk about, so it's going to be uh, very awesome to kind of hear this uh, alongside all of you, and allow God to speak to me, as well as to you, through his story. Um, In Hebrews 11.1, in the New Living Translation, it says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Faith is something where I feel like historically the church has taught it, like it's something that you wish for. It's There's nothing there. It's imaginary. It's pretend. And it's almost, it's not almost, it has created this perception, for example, that science and faith are in contradiction. When in reality, science was, the art of science, let's call it that, was formed to provide the evidence to the things that we believe and the things that we do not see. And that is what I believe stories do. I believe that stories, especially stories where we see God moving, Even if in the moment we didn't realize that's what was happening, but looking back, we can see how God was moving. It's the evidence and the substance that produces faith. And that's why I love us sharing stories. And when you look at the life of Jesus and how he taught, a lot of what he taught, right, was parables. It was stories. And they're so rich. And one of the beauties of stories is that they're tons of lessons intertwined where God can speak to all of us about anything we're going through in life just through one story. Um, I'd love to share also Hebrews 11, 1 in the Passion, because I think reading different translations sometimes brings things alive. You may not understand it in one, you pick up another and it's like light bulb, right? So it says, Now, faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. So faith is a foundation. And then it says, it is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. So when, when like I share a story or shown like you, if you share a story, someone shares a story of faith 
It's the evidence of the unseen that produces faith in other people. It becomes, wow, if God did that for you in your life, then he can do it for me. And that's really what this is about. So, um, Shun, I know, I mean, first of all, I just want to say, Shun has tons of God stories because he's always out praying, evangelizing, sharing faith with people. He has an incredibly prophetic gift. Um, so he's seen God many different times, but would you share with us a story in your life, uh, that meant something to you that you believe would encourage those watching to know, Hey, God is real. He exists and he's here for you. Man. Okay. So it's almost like, I don't know where to start. <laughs> right. You know? Because I have like three three different stories. One that just happened recently. I came across this there's this thing called um, prayer points where you have a specific problem and then you just go point by point in addressing that problem in prayer. So my mom sent me this thing called prayers against barriers of entry in the, in the, in the workplace. So for two weeks straight, I started praying. And I started praying those prayer points. And the people that were in my way, I started asking God to bless them. And God to like, you know, um, because the Bible says pray. Pray for those who oppose you. So in two weeks, it was almost as if everybody that was in my way just parted. Wow, like the Red Sea. Exactly. Everybody just, it was just like, everybody just, but my mouth was I was so I was so in shock and awe. And the main person who was opposing me um, becoming full time, that person resigned and was completely out of the way. They, they, they resigned in, in tears and completely out of the way. And I was like, this was not my intention. But I was shocked to see how um, God just acted within those two weeks. So I got approached by uh, a senior official in my work. And the guy came because, because throughout these, these two years, I was interviewing after interview. I was going to interview after interview. And I was getting better at interviews. <laughs> right. yeah. So uh, the, the director approached me and he said, do you want the position? And I asked him, don't I need to like compete or interview for it? And he looked at me and he said, how many times are you going to interview? Do you want to or not? And I said, of course I want the position. And he was like, you have it. And it was just given to me. And uh, so I was just like, wow, that this is, this is crazy. So I'd like to focus on, for a second, on the prayer, the two weeks you spent praying and those prayer yeah. points your mom sent you. Because I had an encounter with God in my kitchen uh five years ago that changed my life and I was going through a really difficult um situation that involved court and after that encounter I was driving to go to court and it was several hours and I prayed very intensely and when I walked into court everything that I had asked for happened like things that were like so blatantly like duh like it was God, he was answering my prayer because it was the opposite of what had happened numerous times before. And in that moment, I knew one, God had answered my prayer too. Wow, the power of prayer. Um, and I really took authority that day when I was praying, like there was this authority because I knew who I was and who God was. So my question, my first question would be um, the prayers that your mom gave you like what kind of prayers were they? Were they like asking prayers or were they more declaration prayers? Uh, there were more declaration prayers um, with some of the points where, I would say there were more declaration prayers, you know, um, and then some of them was like asking, asking God. But well, for the most part, there were declar declarative prayers. Yeah, and it's and so powerful. 
Yeah, and also scriptures you know, added, added to that also. Yeah, you can't go wrong when you declare scripture. But there is so much power to that. And I think oftentimes we're taught to ask and plead and beg God for things that he's already given to us or told us is, or it's ours through inheritance through Jesus Christ. Yes. So by declaring it, it's your, especially if you believe it, I think believing it and knowing that it's true is foundational, but then when you stand on it, those are really what declaration prayers are, is you're standing on the promises of God and you're saying, no, this is it. And not only do you hear yourself and it builds your faith because you're declaring it, but also the supernatural realm and everything that's opposing you on a spiritual, on the spiritual realm, they're hearing you say, no, this is mine back off. <laughs> I was just thinking about this, that very thought this week and three things, things come to my mind. There are some things that God will not do unless we take action. And, and I believe that there are times where God is waiting for us I agree. to act. And then he comes and he backs us up. Um, I think of Moses. When Moses came to the Red Sea, and he, he started like crying out to God. And God said, what are you, why are you talking to me? Look at what's in your hand. Go ahead and, go ahead and use it. And God gave him an instruction to put his, his, his stick, his rod, out to the ocean. And he did it, and the sea split. Now, mind you, that stick or rod kind of represented power in Moses' hands because it was, it's been used in the past. So God said to him, why are you calling out to me? Look at what's in your hand. You do. I think of the verse in, uh, I believe it's First or Second Chronicles. I think it's in First Chronicles. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, and pray to me, then I will heal your land. And it's not God saying, hey, I'll just come and do it. But no, if you start it, I'll back you up and follow through with what you started. It's a partnership. It's a partnership, exactly. And since the beginning, since the beginning from the Garden of Eden, God has always partnered with man. Because yep. if you notice, God created and he named all the things that were created, he created. But when he made Adam, he said, now you made the animals. You know, so that was Adam partnering with God. I mean, God created this whole universe. But, and he could have said, hey, you know, here's a garden. I'm going to keep it. But he said to Adam, you keep it. You till it. You take care of it. You know, so yeah, definitely, part, definitely partnership. The last thing I'm going to say is, I'm, right now I'm reading the book of Matthew. And when Jesus encountered the sick, you don't see Jesus praying for the sick. Right. He says, be healed. And he gives commands. And he says, this is going to stretch out your hand. The last story I read of healing, the man had a withered hand. So this man has had a withered hand all his life. And Jesus says, stretch out your hand. And the man just, I've never done this before, but here we go. And it, it, he, was, he was healed. So uh, those things really like do speak to me. And God has given us authority as believers on the earth. And a lot of times, and I think there's a period of grace where in our growth as Christians, we pray and God is faithful and God answers. However, it comes to a time where God says, you begin to take authority. I agree. Totally agree. Um, and, it's, and it's partnership. It's us believing and having faith in who we are in him, right? It's not something that we have within ourselves. The authority and the power we have is not something that we obtain. Actually, if you obtain it without Jesus, that's what we would call witchcraft. Right. But when you go through yeah. the door and you have Jesus, 
there is an authority and a power that we have. There is, I like in uh, practical terms, I call it a quality of life that you have. Um, and I am someone who through, uh, not only through scriptures, but also through life experience can say that if you're, if life is constant burden and it's constant affliction, mm. then there is a change that I have to make in my life because it's not matching with what Jesus said. Because Jesus said, yes, you will have trials, you have tribulations. But he also said, you will have peace that surpasses understanding. You will have unspeakable joy. You will have abundance. Like in the same breath that he said, you will have trials and tribulations. And the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I give you life and abundance of life. So the enemy can try to be stealing whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. But the abundance of Jesus is what prevails. So it's something that I teach a lot about because uh, unfortunately, a lot of people believe that living a Christian life is one where you're pretty much living as a martyr, dying, suffering, having nothing, living in poverty. And that to me, I don't see that as what Jesus said he came to do. I don't believe that the abundance, peace, joy, and love is for death. I believe it's for life for us here on earth. I say this, even in the trials, we have access to abundant life. Yep. As long as, you know, one thing that I say in my, in my, in my thoughts to God, I could be going through the worst sin ever, but don't take your presence away from me. As long as I have your presence, as long as I have a sense that you are here, you are near, I'm good. No matter what, I, no matter what it is I'm going through. And we can even look at the people who are suffering persecution for the name of Christ. I believe that they experience the presence of God in a really, really powerful way. I'm not saying that one, you know, the one is better than the other, but each one of us, there's been, we, you know, in the in the time that we have on this earth, God has allotted our days and the the, the trials that we're going to face, and I believe, even for for people in the persecuted church, that God still provides for them, God heals. God speaks to them, and I believe that they don't they 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 they, they do it without wants. Uh, the prayers that I have for my life, I pray for those uh, in the persecuted church. And some may say, some some people may say, "Wow, is that is that fair?" And sometimes I think about it myself. Like I live in this nation called America, is blessed. Um, anybody can succeed and prosper in this nation. Um, I live in, a, I, I mean, I, this is my house, there's air condition, um, there's food and all that stuff. And it's all God's provision, it's all God's grace. But even though, if I was in a, on the other side of the country, in a place where it's not as blessed, but the fact that I'm, a, I'm in the kingdom, God will still take care of my needs. And God will still provide for me, and God will give me peace, and God will give me joy. And... In a sense, I'll be experienced. I'll be able to just experience the goodness of God um, in, in, in a certain way. Um, in a certain way that maybe I wouldn't have because I'm here in America. But at the same time, here in America, I'm experiencing the goodness of God in that in that I'm living in a land that is blessed, and I'm living in a land where. God does take care of my needs. But get this. I told somebody this the other day. That, again, the persecuted church is not better than the church in the West. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going off topic here. Oh, fine. But the church in the West has resources. Yep. With the blessing that God has blessed us with, we're able to not only... 
pray, which is the most powerful thing that we can do for the church that's been persecuted, we're able to send our resources, our money, our planes, whatever we have to assist those who are, who are going through it in the other side of the world, you know? And um, yeah, so we all are experiencing abundant life in one way or the other. And, that, and I think that looking at abundance from a materialistic perspective limits what Jesus actually came to do. Because the reason that those who are in the persecuted church or in Southern, you know, they're in, uh, you know, what we would call third world countries or poor right. nations, the reason they can experience abundance, because you know this, like my parents are missionaries in Africa and in Mozambique and my, and I've been there and my mom's from Angola and we know a lot of missionaries who are there. And we constantly hear that in those nations where they don't have even half of what we have, they're happy and they're always seen, they're always joyful. And if, and this is why I think it's so important for people to expose themselves to other cultures, other societies, and really look at the world from a world perspective outside of the United States, because you look at people who have less than we have, yet they're extremely happy and joyful. Why? Because their joy isn't coming from the things they have. It's exactly. coming from within, like they're satisfied. They have life, they have food, they have some sort of roof over their head. And sometimes the roof over their head, we would need, we'd consider that camping, <laughs> right? So, right, right. Exactly. So I think it's important for people to expose themselves. And um, and another thing to that point, which you brought up of, you know, we're in a blessed nation and we can bless those places that don't have the freedoms that we have in terms of serving God. I also think that living in a country in the United States, you know, you can look at it as like, oh, they're materialistic or they have too much. And I mean, I literally have seen people almost like want us to become like nations like China and stuff so that we have an underground church. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You, why would you go? Why would you go back? Why would you like, do you understand what the forefathers came to do? Right. And oh, by the way, right. we are that beacon of hope. We set that standard that yes. other nations look to and say, that's possible. And then they yeah. go and try and fight for it. Yes. What happens We're, if you take that away? Right. Exactly. You know, what happens if you take that away? Um, then what is somebody has to somebody has to replace. That has to be, in a sense, somebody has to like have that standard. Um, as, as you were talking. The Bible says this, let the person who is poor is rich in faith, but the person who is rich in this world's goods should be rich in good deeds. Huh. So in a sense, there is a need for each other. Absolutely. You know, um, and we kind of, the, the per, I mean, yes, I mean, and mind you, I come from a third world country also. Um, I lived in a third world country until I was the age of 14 uh, before, you know, coming to the United States. Um, the, yeah. Was it a culture shock for you when you came over to the United States? The only culture shock I experienced was when I was in high school, I saw students being rude to the teachers. <laughs> My mouth just dropped, and I was like, because in, in, in Africa, your teachers, your elders are like authority, mm -hmm. almost second to your parents. So I was really, I was really in shock when I, when I saw that. That was the only culture shock that I experienced. Um, I enjoyed the fact that I could just go outside and go play basketball, you know, stuff like that. Um, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I'm very, very grateful that I'm living 
in a, in a, in a country like this. But no matter where I am in the world, God will still be God and God will be faithful. And I will still see his hand of care yeah. and his lesson over my life. Amen. Because you're a child of God. Exactly. Um, I would like to, you, you mentioned that you were reading, you were in Matthew and you noticed that Jesus didn't pray for yes. the sick. He healed them. And there's that verse in Matthew 10, it says Matthew 10, 8, and this is Jesus talking. Um, he said, let me start in verse 7. So Matthew 10, 7, go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. <laughs> Heal the sick, raise the dead, cle- uh, it's a different show, cure those with leprosy and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. And it's something that if you look at the commandments that Jesus left, this verse and other ones, he never tells us to pray for the sick. He says, heal the sick. And Jesus never prayed and asked God, can you please heal this person in front of me? He declared healing. And I know that it can blow people's minds and be like the audacity, but like, Yeah, the audacity, because (laughs) we have Jesus in us and we are one with him. It's so powerful. I mean, and, you know, like we know people raise the devil, uh, raise the dead and people cast out demons. I've I've seen that. And, you know, and it says in that same, it's actually within the same verse. um, It says, give as freely as you have received. And it's not just talking about money. You know, it's talking about God has loved you infinitely, passionately. Give freely your yes. love as much as he has. You know, God has been kind to you and gracious to you and merciful. Be kind and gracious and merciful in abundance, just as he gave it to us. Yes. And when we look at our lives like that, it's, you notice the abundance that you have. Yes. And you want other people to have it. And you're like, here, take it, please. (laughs) There's enough to share. Yes. 100%. 100%. Um, There's more than enough. And it's not limited to the physical material things. As a fact, I could have nothing. I could have nothing. And somebody who doesn't know Jesus could have everything that they ever wanted in this world. And I will be at peace and I'll be at joy. But the person who has this world is good. They may be content to a certain point, but there is still, well, how should, how should I put this? They may be content, content with these worlds good to a certain point, but yet there's still a lack that is there. Why is it that children of wealthy people go to drugs when everything is provided for them. Why is it that I knew of a a, a 17 year old boy who killed himself, but everything, he was 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 kind of like the only child. He had a a sister, but she was much older, but he was raised up as the only boy in the family. And I mean, everything was provided for him. Yet, this man committed suicide. Um, whereas, I could, just, I could just be by myself. <laughs> as long as I have God's presence, I have God's peace. I have, I have there's an there's a inner contentment that's, that's in my heart. And if you look through the Gospels, God, Jesus did not just bring, again, yeah, Jesus brought the message of the gospel and he brought hope to people and he brought healing to people. But also Jesus took care of the physical needs of people. Yeah. And we can see that where he fed. He looked at the crowd, he had compassion on them. The, the disciples said, hey, send them away. And Jesus says, no, you feed them. You feed them. And... It, it, Jesus gave his disciples an impossible task, but Jesus knew what he was going to do. And um, he took care of the people. He took care yep. of the needs, you know. 
it's full it's fulfillment i think it's hard for someone to truly live this life being fulfilled feeling fulfilled if jesus isn't there if god is missing in their life and that's really what brings the abundance and that's really what allows us to feel peace when there's chaos all around us so let me can i speak on that real quick sure i'm gonna go into another story okay this happened this weekend um so growing up my mom is a nurse registered nurse i've never seen my mom sick ever in my life my mom is 77 years old so of course there are thoughts that come into my mind. What if this was to happen? Uh-huh. What if she was to pass away? How, how would I react? What would I do? All these things. So I get a call from my sister. This ha- I think this was Saturday. I get a call from my sister. She was like, my brother saw my mom throw up in the house uncontrollably, and he called the ambulance. And she was like, I'm at work. I cannot go home. So pray. I said, okay. Her voice was steady. Her voice was calm. But there was a certain seriousness in her voice. So I was on my laptop doing some work. And all throughout the day, I've just felt this longing, this pull to go pray. And I'm like, okay, this is it. I close my laptop, I get in my car, I drive to the park. Because when I want to get away, sometimes it's just good to just get away from the house and go spend time with God or whatever. So on my way to the park, of course, there's dread and worry and fear and anxiety in my heart. And I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit I have learned how to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit through the trials that I've been through. And I heard a very, very gentle voice say, speak to the storm. And I said, okay. And that kind of like brought hope into the situation. And as soon as I got to the park and I parked my car, I said, I speak peace to this situation, the shalom, the peace of God, the nothing missing, the nothing broken, peace of God to the situation. Then I started praying and I was almost in tears because I'm thinking about all these thoughts started coming. And there was a thought that came in that I was gonna lose my, I was gonna lose my mom. And I'm just like, you know what? Every one of us has, every one of us, we're gonna cross that door someday but I was just seeking the Lord and I was just like giving the situation to him while at the same time speaking peace to the situation and out of nowhere my heart just changed imagine a safe right and you have to turn the safe a certain way to open it my heart just like transformed like if my heart was like this, it just went like this. Or think about an hourglass with the sand coming down, or whatever, and you flip it. My heart went from worry, fear, anxiety, to all of a sudden peace. Without anything changing in the circumstance. Yeah. So the physical part of me wanted to say, I need proof. But from knowing God enough and knowing the word of God, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I took that and I texted my sister and I said, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. Things are going to go back to normal. That's what I told her. Um, while I was praying, I called one of my cousins and she had been mentored by my mom. My mom is just like the matriarch, spiritual mm-hmm. matriarch of the family. She was the one that prayed for me when I started doing my own thing. Um, And, you know, this cousin ended up calling me and I told this cousin not to worry. 
that, that, that God spoke to my heart. And God didn't really speak. It was just a sense of peace. Right. There was no like, everything's going to be fine. It's just like, I knew. And I was like, but I had to declare it. Mm -hmm. I, had to, I, had to, I had to go with it. I had to like grab it and not doubt. Um, and that's just, that just comes from experience and like relationship with God. And I told her, don't worry, everything's going to work out because she was worried. She was concerned. So I had to bring the same peace that God brought to me. I had to give it to her. Now, my brother, who was, who was with my mom in the hospital, he's a non-believer. And then I texted him and I told him, God, everything's going to be fine. God just gave me peace about the situation. You know, so I believe now if, if let's say somebody else was going through that and God's kind of like, uh, let's say I was praying for them and God gave me peace about their situation. Now I would have to declare that to them and speak prophetically and say, don't worry about it. God has it under control and he will take care of it. Um, I remember at work, this uh, lady came up to me. Um, she was uh, a, 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 a woman trying to be a man. Came up to me and said, hey, I'm in trouble. My boss is going to get on me for doing A, B, and C. So... I said to her, okay, I'm going to pray for you. I started praying, and God gave me peace about this person's situation. So I texted this person, and I said, you know what? And this was a picture that God gave me. I saw, like, you know how in the fall, leaves fall from the trees? Yeah. And I saw the wind just coming and blowing those leaves, and those leaves going away. So I told this person... Everything is going to blow away like a leaf in the, in the wind. Like nothing is going to happen. You're fine. You're good. And how about this? Moments later, I get a text from this person, and they were like, oh, I owe you church because everything is okay. Everything is fine. And I was, when I saw this person at work, <clears throat> I, told, I told her, like, you don't have to come to church. You know, like, you don't have to owe me church because of, you know, this, whatever happened or whatever. And uh, the other person, I mean, she ended up coming to church with me. And that was cool. But that also is like a witness or testimony in that person's life of how God responded to their need. At that right. Time. Even yeah. when you think about in our thought process, she wasn't Christian, mm -hmm. and yet God still moved, spoke through you to her. Let her know this blew over because God made it blow over. And unfortunately, in our culture with this give-take situation, right, her first thought was, oh, I need to pay God back, so <laughs> I'm going to go to church. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know what? It's not bad. Like, it's not a bad thing. I think it's a great opportunity, right? And it kind of like opens the door for them to be like, wow, God moved for me. And you never know what happens when they go to church. But it kind of, I think it says a lot by the fact that her thought was, I have to go pay God back by going to church, you know? And it's like, no, God wants a relationship with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I shared that story to show how we as believers, we're conduits. Yep. We have peace. We have joy. We have this contentment. We have this blessing on our lives. But we are blessed to be a blessing. And people know and people can see what's going on. People can look at our lives and say something's different about this person. And that I shared that to show as an example the peace. You see, when I have drama in my life, I know who to go to. I know where to run to. There are people that have drama in their lives and they don't know who to turn to. And some people may turn to the bottle. 
Some people may turn to drugs. Some people may turn to sex or whatever form of escapism right. that they, they, they can. But here's the thing. I know who to go to. And the person that I'm going to is able to relate with me and speak to me and give me instruction. The whole situation with my mom, you know, I got a text later on that day from my brother. She's been discharged. Cool. Yay. Yeah. And I called her that evening. It was as if nothing ever happened. <laughs> you know? And I was just like, there is no way I could thank God enough. I was just, when, when God gave me that peace, I, there was no way that I could, I accepted it. There was no way that I could worry. As a matter of fact, I was sitting in my car and just kind of like, like just kind of like having this sense of relief. And it's like, how can I say thank you enough? So there, there, there's nothing there. I mean, I could say, I couldn't express the gratitude that I was feeling in my heart to God, except to say, God, like, you're awesome. Yeah. You know, that hope that we have, we're able to give to other people. And the experience that I had with that, with that girl at work, that was just a seed that was sown into her life. You know? And, you um, shared what you freely gave to her. Exactly. What was freely given to you. Exactly. Exactly. I remember I got into a business deal with a guy who was not a believer, which I, was, which I should have never done. And anytime money would come into the business, the money would leave right away. And he told me it's as if somebody is just taking the money away. You know, like money will come, there'll be a problem, we have to pay for the problem, solve the problem, whatever. So there was a time that we came into a major crisis in our, in our business. Um, he called me in panic and he was like, you need to pray. You need to pray right now. And I was like, okay. So I started praying. I hung up the phone. I started praying. And God gave me peace about the situation. I just, I can't explain it. It was just like, I knew that things were going to work out. So I, I called him. No, I texted him. And I said, everything is going to work out. Don't worry about it. Everything is going to be good. And then moments later, he picks up the phone and he calls me. Do you know the first thing that he said? He was like, God is with you. This is a non-believer. I think, some, I think you muted yourself. I said, wow. And I was like, Emmanuel. He, this, is, uh, this guy is as secular as you can get. Usually people that are secular, they don't say things like that. That's almost like a Christianese. Right. And he was like, God is with you. And I'm just like, I mean, I didn't tell him like I know, but I'm like, yeah, I can go to God. Right. That, that, that well, type of thing. If you think about it, like you said, right, we're conduits. And yeah. the scriptures say that nature speak of God. Like no one can deny the existence of God just based on nature. But if you think about it, we are also part of God's creation. We are his children. And people around us have the opportunity to encounter God just by being associated with us, just yeah. by knowing us. And I think a lot of times, um, you know, as Christians, for those of us who are Christians, we aspire yeah. to have a big audience or be on a pulpit, you know, or whatever, yeah. have tons of followers. But the reality is that you have people around you that we call sphere of influence. You have your yeah. sphere of influence, whether it's your family, your friends, the people you work with, uh, your, your kids, friends, your neighbors. Uh, the local grocery store, the local Walmart, where, your gym, wherever you go, yes. that's your sphere of influence. Oh and are goodness. those people experiencing God through you? Do they get to see God through you? You don't even have to put your hands on them. 
They don't even need to know that you just prayed for them. But your mere presence just exuded a light in the spirit that has the potential to change their life. That's who we are. That's how part, think about where I go, because I'm one with Jesus and I have the Holy Spirit, right? So where I go, if I go into Publix, Jesus just walked in. It's not me. It's not because I'm there. It's because he's there and I'm his temple. And I just walked in and now Publix gets to experience Jesus because I'm there. And it's not this thing. It's not this spooky thing. It's not this weird thing, but it's about intentionality and recognizing when I walk into a place, I can change the atmosphere and someone's life can be changed simply because I help change the atmosphere because I recognize who I am as a child of God. Yes. The child of the one who created everything we see. <laughs> yes. What Powerful. A, what an awesome privilege we have. And uh, what an awesome blessing. And um, again, I say to myself, people need to experience this. People need to know this because, yeah, it's, it's um, I, I can't, I can't explain it. It's hard. It's one of those things like whenever we teach on spiritual things, it's sometimes hard to put into words because it's almost like you have to experience it. But it's something that I've really been seeking God for is to help me put the words uh, to it and help me understand the practicality behind it to lead someone into it, the experience, especially because some are more inclined to it, but some aren't. So those people who have no frame of reference, Mm. I'm asking God to teach me how to show them, how to teach them, how to lead them there. I don't want people living through me, like even with the prophetic, like you can ask me for for, for a prophetic word, but I don't want you, anyone, like not you specifically, but anyone, I don't want anyone to depend depend on on me to hear from God. I want yeah. you to know the only reason I hear from God is because I have relationship. Same thing for you. You have relationship and it's available to everyone. You do yeah. not need a prophet to tell you messages from God. God wants to speak to you directly. He wants you to hear him. Yeah, it's great to hear from other people and get prophetic words and all that stuff. That's amazing. But it's something that It's like a baby. When a baby is born, he's not selfish. He's dependent. He's immature. He needs milk. He needs to be changed. He needs to be put to sleep. He needs to, you know, and then as you grow, as you mature, like in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, when I was a child, I thought childish. So it's, it's, to me, it's, I see, it's the change in question from what can you do for me? Because I'm yes. dependent and I need to learn to, what can I do for you? And that's what God is a parent. He is a parent and he doesn't want you to be, stay immature. He doesn't want you to ask, Hey, so-and-so preacher, or so-and-so prophet, tell me what God is saying. He wants you to go to him and say, daddy, yes. what are you saying? Like you yeah. went to God about your mom, right? And you said, God, man, I'm scared. I, what am I going to do? He saw your heart like fearful and he talked to you and said, don't worry about it. I got you. And then you delivered that message. But ultimately what God wants is that those people you delivered that message to, he wants to be able to talk to them the same way he talked to you. Yes. It's yes. beautiful. And you know what that's called? In my own opinion, that's called intimacy. God wants, because if I get a prophetic word from you, it's secondhand. Right. But if I hear the voice of God in my heart and God speaks to me about my life, that's like connection. That's like face to face. That's closeness. That's intimacy. So do you know that as I, you know, so, God instructs us to meditate on his word, the Bible, day and night. 
Do you know that there are times where I come across a verse and it speaks to my heart so clearly and so deeply that in a thousand years I've never have heard them in a sermon. I never heard sermons. And I'm like, wow, oh, God opens the, uh, the meaning of that verse or gives a certain meaning to it and speaks to you and you're like, wow. Yep. Never heard this before. And um, that is intimacy. Do you know that when we go to heaven, God is going to give us a name that nobody else will know except him and us. And in the human form, I compare it to your grandma giving you a, a pet name. Right. It's only for you. Or your dad or your mom giving you a name. And it's like, that's you, you, you guys have that special connection with each other. And that is, to me, that's intimacy. And that, that's what God wants for every single person. Well, I just thought about this as a good example. Like I'm married, right? So imagine that instead of my husband telling me that he thinks I'm beautiful or he loves me, I'm always hearing it from his mom or my daughters or, but he never tells me directly. That would never be acceptable in a relationship. <laughs> Right. Or like yeah. my dad as my father would send me encouraging words through my mom, but never tell me directly. It yeah. would make me wonder, does my dad really love me? Like, is he afraid of me? Does he think yeah. I'm disgusting? Like, why won't he talk to me? Why does he only talk to me through my mom? Right. It would there there it's almost like a veil. There's a block. And we don't realize it, but we do that to God a lot. Like we want him to yeah. talk to us through someone else, but we don't accept that. Like we're not friends with people who don't talk to us directly. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the fallacy of being a human being in the sense that we want to see, we want to hold, we want to touch. Yeah. It's just a, I think it's just a, a natural human tendency. Which is why God says, walk by faith. There have been times where God has spoken to me. And I've prayed for people. And they get healed. And I'm in unbelief. I'm like, please, <laughs> it happens? Man. Oh, it's happened to us. We've been out praying for people. And then someone will, like, get healed. And you're like, whoa. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just praying for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember one time God really like corrected me. I prayed for this girl at work and she was having some issues in her in her stomach with like di digestive issues and something with her urinary tract and you know stuff like that. It was just it was all bad. And that morning before I went to work, I asked God, somebody out there needs you. And like just send me to that person. So I was getting off, I was going in the parking lot. Here's this girl, she works at Firehouse at the airport. And I started talking to her. And then in our conversation, it turns into, she has this problem. And in my, in my body, this is what I felt. I felt like, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna move forward. And I felt like the Holy Spirit wanted to just jump out of my body like that. <laughs> and I heard in my, in, my, in, my, in my mind, this is a person, this is a person. And I said, oh, okay. And I clued in because I'm a little bit slow. <laughs> I was like, Are oh. we all at times? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I can pray for you. And I prayed for the person. And then I didn't see the person for like a week or two. And I came to work, like, looking for the person to find out, like, what the situation was. And then finally I saw the person, and she was like, man, I went to the doctor. The doctor said there was nothing there. And I have my appetite. My appetite is back. I'm eating like crazy. And all these good news. 
And I'm like, no way. Yay! <laughs> like, no way. I'm like, are you messing with me? Are you messing with my emotions? <laughs> but I was questioning, I was questioning her. I was questioning the situation. Like, did this really happen? It was almost like I didn't believe it. So you know how in the book of Acts, they were praying for Peter when he was in jail? Uh-huh. And then Peter gets released, and he shows up at the door, and the girl opens the door and closes it, and goes to the people, and they're like, oh, it's this ghost. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really him. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God, we, we're praying, and God answers the prayer, and Peter's at the door. It's like, oh, whatever, <laughs> you know? So it's almost like God answers the prayers of the unbelieving church. But the Holy Spirit really challenged me and said, don't do that. And it was very, very stern. It was very, very clear. Don't do that. Don't question. We walk by faith. Yeah. Right. And we just have to go with it and trust. So I said that to say we as human beings, like, again, Thomas, they call down doubting Thomas for a reason. It's like, no, Jesus has not risen from the dead. Well, he's been talking about this the whole time. You know, three days and the sun will never rise, you know, all these things. And then Jesus shows up and says, Here, put your <laughs> put your hands in my in my in my in my hands and see for yourself. And then he was like, Whoa, you know. <laughs> it is and, you, it is you. Yeah. And Jesus said this to him, You're blessed because you see. But those who do not see but believe are going to be more blessed, you know. And I've seen Jesus in physical form, but I know I know who he is, you know. You've had enough evidence yes. and substance to know that it's real. Yes, and, exactly. Right, and we're coming up, you know, at the, at the end, but here, but... Sure. It's really the purpose of us sharing stories is exactly that. It's yeah. to provide evidence. And I can guarantee, actually, I can say, I, I don't even want to say I'm pretty sure. I can guarantee for all those who are watching that you have received enough evidence throughout your life that God is with you and that he's reached out to you several times in many ways, even in the darkest of moments. But maybe you just haven't realized it. And that's totally okay because I was there. I was there for a long time where God was with me in dark moments. And I had no idea that he was with mm. me. Mm. But when I realized it, it changed everything. Like the story that Sean shared. It wasn't the circumstance that changed in the moment. Yes, God moved in the end. But it was him. It was his heart. And that's really the key. It's allow the evidence that God is giving you through through even this show. I mean, if you want to live a life where you see God moving in Sean's life and you're like, I want God to move in my life like that, I can guarantee you that he has. Mm. It's just about opening your eyes, sorry, opening your eyes to perceive him and to recognize him. And that's, I mean, that's what my story is all about. These episodes is, is really all about showing you how God is involved in the details of our lives, in the ordinary places, in the heartaches. Sean was worried about his mom, you know, kind of all of our minds sometimes go places. Like I think about that too. How would I react when my parents go and yeah. all of that stuff, right? It's normal stuff. And Jesus isn't afraid of it. He's not intimidated by it. He doesn't run the other way. He doesn't look at you and say, you're crazy. You have no faith. No, he sits with you in those moments and he whispers to you and he hugs you just like a friend, just like a father, just like a husband. And he says, it's going to be okay. I'm with you and he'll guide you and he'll show you, but you have to be open to perceive it and to recognize it. So I just hope that these stories that you're hearing each week, Open up your eyes, your ears, your senses, your spirit, your soul to recognizing that God is moving in your life. Because it's really not a question of if he's moving. It's a question of, am I recognizing it, right? 
So Shane, no, I want to no, thank you. Oh yeah, sure, go ahead. No, a radio antenna has to tune to the right frequency to get yeah. the signal. Yep, That's absolutely. All. So, um, you know, kind of in line with some of Sean's, I told you Sean had tons of stories, has tons of stories and many more that he hasn't shared yet. Um, but Sean does uh, meet uh, once a month of, on the first Friday of every month. So you can reach out to him if, the, if you're local and that's something that you're interested in or you're in town visiting and you want to um, just do that. He uh, sometimes they're outdoors, sometimes it's in his living room. So it's different places. It's really where spirit leads and he goes out a lot, right? Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, um, usually on the weekends, I go out to the beach or I may go out to the mall or wherever people are. The usual people are at the beach, you know, Florida. Um, we have warm weather year round. And I just interact with people and uh, just, you know, pray, pray with them, pray for them. You know, as God shows me things, I speak to them, and um, I share with them God's heart. I share with them what God thinks about them and uh, the love that he has for them and what he's done for them. So, yeah. Yeah, so uh, just reach out to him if you're interested in that. Shun, I want to thank you for taking the time. We're actually recording pretty early in the morning. So thank you for taking the time to share your stories, being vulnerable and open, um, and just encouraging and freely giving the faith and hope that Jesus has given you to others. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of My Story. I hope you enjoyed being part of our conversation and found yourself infused with hope as you listen to all of Shaun's stories. The Authentic Faith Podcast holds three episodes a week. Tuesdays, we have a teaching, Thursdays, I randomly come on and ask a question, and Sundays, we have my story. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. Oh yeah, and remember to share it with your friends and family. Until next time.